7 grams per ton, or you could also say 7 parts per million. Let that sink in for a moment. That is the average concentration of platinum within the Marinsky Reef. The Marinsky Reef, as seen in the top left-hand side of my slide, is the second largest resource of platinum in the world and is currently being mined mostly in the northwest province of South Africa. So how do we go from these extremely low concentrations to the almost pure platinum you see in jewelry or in the exhaust system of your car? Well, we do this through a sub-discipline of metallurgy we call mineral processing. Why minerals? Well, rocks are made up out of very small grains of minerals, and the platinum does not actually occur as pure metal within the rock, but rather within platinum-bearing minerals. So what we want to do is we want to detach these precious minerals from waste minerals, or we want to liberate them through crushing and milling. And then we want to separate, retrieve, and concentrate these precious minerals through flotation. And by flotation, I literally mean we push air bubbles through a muddy mixture. The precious minerals attach to the bubbles, they float to the top, and we scoop them off in a process that smells and looks suspiciously similar to gold-tinted chocolate milk. But with the Marinsky Reef, there's an additional layer of complexity in the sense that it is geologically highly variable. What do I mean with this? Well, if you go to a mine with a reef, you will see that from one part to another part, the width of the reef and the rocks associated with the reef will vary. So the question of my PhD that I asked is, do these geological variations lead to variations in the mineral processing characteristics? So I went to a mine with highly variable Marinsky Reef, as seen in the top right of my slide, and I sampled all these different reef types, and they were individually processed through milling, crushing, and flotation. And I found that, yes, these geological differences actually do lead to differences in mineral processing characteristics. And in order to understand the mechanisms behind this, I did a quantitative microscopic study of these platinum-bearing minerals and the waste minerals, as seen in the bottom left of my slide. And understanding these mechanisms, I could use this information to propose mineral processing groups where different reef types get put together and they can get processed in a similar way. And I could then use this information and it was overlaying on top of the geological mine plan, as you see in the middle of the slide, and that leads to a mineral processing plan. And if this is then utilized in the future, it could lead to cost saving, leading to more efficient processing, and could improve the profits of the mine by improving the recoveries of platinum. Thank you. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.